Good afternoon and welcome to Code Green. I'm your guest host, Ethan Allen, filling in for Howard Rigg. Howard's traveling today and asked me to step in. And we have two wonderful guests here today. Uh, good to see you, Kailani uh, Shinsha Shinshato. Shinsato. Shinsato, sorry. And Yo Kawanami. Kawanami. Okay, both from Hiko, right? Hi. All right, excellent. And they're here to talk about how Hawaii is really going, uh, leading the nation in renewable energy. Um, so I gather there's been some sort of reorganizations and some sort of refocusing of programs at, uh, at HECO to, to really get the public more engaged in, in sort of taking us to that goal, right? That's right, Ethan. Um, so we wanted to share a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that Yo's team and my team have merged together. Um, and so now we are customer energy resources, and we'll get into what that really means a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. um, but that's basically all of the, the stuff that's on our customers' uh, roofs or in their homes that we as the utility can use as a grid resource. Right, because more and more the, the grid is now shifting from being a sort of one-way process to being, being very much a two-way, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just power being generated and distributed out, now coming back in from people's solar systems uh, as well as coming out from, the, from your generators, right? That's absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. That's a major change for us. Oh, it's got, it's got to be huge. I mean, it's just it's something 10 years ago you weren't dealing with this at all, really, mm -hmm. right? And now suddenly this has become a big thing. It's a really big thing. Yeah, right, because Hawaii is doing a whole lot of solar, which makes sense, right? So we get a whole lot of sunshine here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We are um, leading the nation, um, but even though we're leading the nation, we know that we have to grow customer energy resources mm -hmm. even more. Right, so this, this is a whole program then to really help get Hawaii's energy consumers uh, to be more active partners in this whole business and be sure more and more of, them, more and more of us do put solar panels on our roofs, buy into cooperative solar systems or whatever they may be, uh, and work with HECO to, to build a more resilient power grid so that we can not have to use all the diesel fuel, right? That's absolutely right. <laughs> That's our, our plan for the future. Right, because we have this stated goal by 2045, we're going to be essentially 100% renewable, right? That's we're, right. We're close to on track, as I understand it. Close to 100? Well, we uh, still have a ways to go. Well, we're not, but we're close on track for it. We are on yeah, track. Yeah, okay. That's so, right. That's right. Well, good. So we do have some... Slides and okay, presentation sure. what, materials that we brought with us. Sure, um, why, why, why don't you call off the first slide and, and let's, let's start in here. Sounds good. So um, I th thank you for that good introduction. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about um, why we're here today. Um, but I, I guess I'll, I'll call out one thing that um, customer energy resources are actually a really big part of our plan to get to 100%. Um, so we as a company put together a strategy for how we're going to get from where we are today to where we need to be in 2045. And so that's what we're going to share with you and your audience. Today. Sure, because you couldn't just keep building generators and building generators and building generators without massively increasing the import of fossil fuels and leading to increased carbon emissions and other undesirable things, right? That's right. right. It's, so it's yeah, no but, simple task. Right. <laughs> right. Instead, we're, we're going we're gonna, to borrow people's roofs, as it were, and mm -hmm. set up solar farms and wind farms and various other things, right? Mm -hmm. We need a lot of different resources right. to get there, exactly. including customer resources. Right, right. right. Um, so we'll go to the next slide, if we could. Um, so I mentioned we're leading mm -hmm. the nation, but mm -hmm. that definitely doesn't come without challenges. Mm -hmm. Um, so this might be stating the obvious, but we don't have a large transmission cord that takes <laughs> us to um, the mainland. You can't just plug into California and <laughs> suck energy out. We wish we could, <laughs> but it's not that right. easy. And even between our islands, we don't have any interties. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all of our islands are isolated grids, okay. uh, which makes running our islanded grids pretty um, challenging. Sure. Right. So if you're on the mainland and if you're one of our sister utilities, well, in our industry, starting from the basics, we have to have supply equal demand in real time at all times. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we have excess generation, we can't ship that off to a neighboring state. Mm -hmm. And contrary, if we don't have enough, we can't just bring it in from somewhere else. Right. Whereas on the mainland, they can do some of that. They right? can do some of that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so that makes integration of renewable variable resources. Right. So they're not 
Uh, we do have some firm, but um, many of our resources, like the sun, the wind, mm -hmm. are, sometimes they're here, sometimes they're not. So it makes integration sort of extra mm -hmm. challenging for us in Hawaii. Right. Yeah. Small islands, again, smaller the island is sort of closer you are to the edge all the time. That's right. You know, so That's the, right. The lower your sort of inherent resiliency is, basically. That's mm -hmm. absolutely right. right. Mm -hmm. So, so how, are we, how are we doing this? So, right. <laughs> so we can hop to the next slide. Um, just a few more data points as, as context. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned that we are leading the nation. So our, our city of Honolulu is the first in the nation for per capita solar integration. Um, and what's made this a, a very exciting ride for, for all of us in customer energy resources is that we experienced this sort of all at once. So just in the past five years, we've experienced a 91% increase in solar adoption. Um, and, and that's obviously a lot, right? As a state, 18% of our residential homes have solar, and that translates to one in every three single-family homes on Oahu. And you can probably see this just as you drive around mm -hmm. our communities. It's very obvious sure. um, that we, we have a lot of solar. But um, And we'll get into this later on, but going forward, it can't just be about passive PV systems anymore. Right. It's got to be a lot more sophisticated, and we're going to look more closely at what um, our homes can do in managing our loads or our demand for electricity and how we can make those more flexible. That helps our system operators add more renewables to the grid. Right, right. But it is, it is clear. Uh, I just, it me every time I get on certain sections of H1, you look down and there's more solar mm -hmm. panels on more homes now. Mm -hmm. It used to be sort of a smattering. Now it's a fair number, and you can tell right. in a few years it's going to be everybody, right? Everybody. And, yeah. and in fact, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's actually what we're planning for. <laughs> Uh, by 2045, in our plants, we want to have um, solar on every roof, uh, which is a very bold, almost crazy idea, oh. right? But that's a part of our, our plan. Oh, it should, should, be. should be. We should all that way. Everyone's investing in the system, mm -hmm. right? Everyone's sort of part of, part of, the, part of the solution. That's right. right. That's right. Um, so we can move to the next visual. Um, so the, the big wave of solar that we experienced on in our net energy metering program or NEM program, which was highly popular, um, but that uh, was closed in 2015 um, because I think our Public Utilities Commission recognized that that couldn't be a very sustainable program for us to get us to the high levels we need to be at. Um, so our programs since then have very much evolved. Um, and so this is a, a summary of what our newer programs are, and I'll just give you a few examples of how they got um, more sophisticated over time. So Customer Grid Supply Plus is a program where, um, first program of its kind in Hawaii, where we can actually manage that system if we need to. So if there's some grid emergency and we need to sort of save the grid, um, we can manage that system. Um, and then another one you see there is Smart Export. And so this is a program that incentivizes our customers to actually charge their batteries during the day. So this is when we already have a ton of TV coming back to us in the mm -hmm. grid, right? So we've got excess. Um, we don't compensate our customers for um, that export during the daytime, mm -hmm. but if they export out of their batteries at night, they do get compensated okay. for that exported energy. Right. NEM Plus is where if you're a current NEM customer, you can add to your system and mm -hmm. you can still stay a NEM customer, but that added part just can't export back to the grid. Again, we're trying to always manage real time and demand, so making sure we don't have too much during the day. Right, right. And then the last one there is really promising to us. So that's community-based renewable energy. It's essentially community solar. And I think you alluded to that earlier, Ethan. It's a, a new program where if you live in a condo, and many of our customers live in condos, right? right? Or if you have a roof, you don't want to put panels on your roof, or it's shaded. Um, even our low to moderate income customers, um, we want to, when we say we want to grow customer energy resources, we have to look at that huge segment that still hasn't participated mm -hmm. in it yet. So all of those I mentioned, we want to really be able to target with community solar. Um, so we're in the first phase of it now, and we're installing projects. We don't have customers enrolled yet, but that should be coming soon. So this will be, as a condo owner, I could essentially mm -hmm. opt into some, it might, might be a solar farm, a Waimanalo or something, and be sort of mm -hmm. part of that, basically, That's right. and, and enjoy the benefits. Uh, yeah, okay. That's exactly right. Yeah. You'd still get a credit on your bill, yeah. just like our other customers do who have solar on their roofs. I'm sure at the same time you're looking on good ways to put some solar panels on things like condos and 
uh, mm-hmm. you know, make solar as pervasive as possible, right? That's absolutely right. We're yeah, looking so. at that too. It's an option for our um, commercial customers as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Super. So we'll move to the next visual. So this is um, this is the need for customer energy resources. Right. So we put together a plan for how we're going to get to 100 percent. And this is straight from that plan. We call it our um, power supply improvement plan. And it's kind of small, but the you can see uh, at the bottom the legend that shows the different colors and how they align to different resources. And you see that huge chunk of yellow at the top. Um, that's the customer energy resources. Oh, okay. And so that's what keeps you and I up at night. How are we going to get that huge okay. amount? between now and 2045. Wow, okay, yeah. And it's quite a big amount. By 2030 even, we have a milestone um, and we need over a thousand megawatts um, more by then. And by 2045, we need like 3000 megawatts more. So that's mm-hmm. up from 850 roughly that we have today. So we have a lot more work to do, but I think that's what makes our state very unique. Um, no other state or um, utility we think is gonna be as dependent on our customers' resources as we will be. Right, but it should give you that sort of diffuse network then, uh, a great deal of resiliency in some sense, right? That's right, you know, that's because right. Because within that grid then, hopefully if some place needs more, you can shuttling power throughout that grid in an organized way, right? Right, and so in order to do that, we have to modernize our grid, right. and that's um, what we started to do, but we'll need to continue to do. Right. Because the grid was not initially set up to do anything like that. It was just sort of a simple, you know, lots of power out on some main trunk lines and then gradually decreasing lots of power out on smaller and smaller lines. Right? That's absolutely right. Yeah. Now we're going to have little power plants right. at the very have... edge of the grid. Right. And how do we get their energy coming back? Right, yeah. Ooh. Right. Super challenging. Super challenging. Yeah. Yep. But a really fun, um, exciting time, like an opportunity for us to be involved in this kind of transformation. Yeah. I mean, the technologies are now there that really enable this. This isn't, we're not talking about some futuristic thing, right? You're talking technologies that really do currently exist mm-hmm. that, that can build these systems, that allow you to feed power back in and regulate that power so that you never get too much back in at once. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we, we do have a lot of solutions in place, but we know that there will be more mm-hmm. technology coming in the future. Mm-hmm. We don't know what that looks like yet. So we'll constantly have to be adapting. Yeah, and it, uh, this is, I mean, it's really great to hear this because it, it's so important to, to recognize that we live in a, in a very dynamic world, right? It's changing, the, the, you know, the climate is changing, the weather patterns are changing, all this stuff is, is going to, uh, not going to be the same as it was. And therefore, you know, it's great to see the HECO is sort of getting out ahead of the whole thing and saying, yeah, let's, let's build a system that will adapt to this change and really handle this, this kind of change, this new technologies, as costs per kilowatt hour for solar keeps dropping, and it's more and more attractive for people to put it on, and we'll figure out doubtless ways to make old farm, farms of solar panels and do something with the ground underneath, we'll grow shade, shade tolerant crops of some sort, doubtless, and you know, the whole thing, uh, you know, uh, kudos to you. <laughs> we are going to uh, explore this much further um, in, the, in the near future, but right now I'm, I'm being told we need to take a quick break. Um, Lonnie, yo, we'll, we'll be from Hego. They'll there be with us when we return in one minute. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Polo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Welcome back.
back to Code Green here. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, filling in for Howard Vig, who's uh, traveling right now. With me there, Kayawani and Yo from uh, Hawaiian Consumer Customer Energy Resources. That's right. Sorry, the new, the new, the new, new uh, consolidated department there. And we've been talking in the first part of the show about, about some of the ways that we're uh, all going to be working together to, to build uh, that goal of 100% renewable energy by 2045. And a big part of that is going to be reliant on uh, the customer base and getting energy back in from the customers instead of simply feeding it out. Largely solar energy, but probably some other things. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's the next step? Well, we'll, we'll sort of, um, we talked in the last segment about background and where we've come from. And going forward, um, we have a strategy, and I'll hand off to you in a second, but maybe if we... Um, go to the next visual that we had, and that kind of starts us off on this conversation. Um, the strategy, uh, I think, is really captured well in this circle here. So we have a customer-first strategy, and, and that's represented by the customers in the middle. You really need to understand each of their needs, their wants, in order to offer them valuable uh, products and services going forward. And then the next circle there represents our anchors of our strategy, and that's the one, two, three on the side. And, and we went over this already. We know that customer energy resources are gonna be essential for us to get to 100%. And so because of that, we need to expand opportunities for customer resources. But we have to make sure that we don't leave anybody behind in the mm -hmm. pursuit of renewable energies because not all of our customers are gonna to wanna to adopt it. So we have to do it in a way that's fair to them. Right. Um, so that's a part of our strategy too. And then the outermost circle represents the fact that we as the utility can't do this kind of change on our own. We have to work with stakeholders and get everybody's perspectives and feedback in order for us to kind of have common alignment, we hope, and a, and a path forward for everybody. Yeah, it's very much a, a systemic change you're talking about here, and, and we're all part of that. Uh, HECO is a part of it. The stakeholders, the electrical consumers are parts of it. The corporations are parts of it. Individual households are part of it. Every, you know, community Everyone. centers, everybody. You know, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, thank you, Lonnie. So, how are we going to do this? If we can show the next visual, um, as Lonnie said, customer centric, we cannot force the situation to happen and tell people to add on a solar without the proper message and the value as that we provide. So, the three customer approaches that we're taking is the customer choice where customer decides, hey, I, I want to include participate into this that's sort of the easier ones and then the two other ones are collaboration and co-creation to get with the customers figuring out a methodology of how can we create a balanced grid and inv inviting another perhaps a consultant uh, contractors to provide that model we call those aggregators someone that can help us provide that environment to be able to connect to the grid mm -hmm. so those are the three c's that we're looking into mm -hmm. And then the next slide, we can talk about uh, what, Ethan, you mentioned what are the customer energy resources. Mm -hmm. Solar certainly is the easier of the options, but as you can see from the pictures, the entire house now comes into an energy resources. Mm -hmm. uh, an individual with an electric vehicle has a battery that's perhaps usable. Uh, Lonnie earlier mentioned two areas merged. The, Customer energy resource operations was formerly known as demand response. That is an area where we typically worked, like you said, Ethan, 10 years ago, we were not talking about solar and storage, so we were working with water heaters and air conditioners, being able to control those customer energy resource and be able to balance the grid. Now, can we make sure to align that with what Lonnie's program has so that we are balancing the grid together, not siloed and being separated out? So those are some of the key attributes that we're looking that these houses can uh, combine. The water heater programs are not going away, but we want to work together right. with the solar storage systems. They're just now a small part of a much bigger That's system, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Even, even within each household now becomes sort of a more complex unit that you have mm -hmm. to look at as a whole. Whether, yes, mm -hmm. whether they have an electric car that can be both absorb energy, excess energy when, uh, when you've got it, basically, or can so we feed it back in when you need it, right? That's exactly yeah. right. You mentioned earlier about, you know, we cannot be just generation-centric. Uh, I hit it in the nail where 
we need some resources to actually absorb some of the energies at a certain times and whether that's a pricing program or simply asking the customer, hey, can you charge your vehicle more often during this time? Those are type of the opportunities that we want to be aligned and offering to the customer in a simplistic message. We don't want to have 20, 40 different type of programs, but rather a more simple approach of these are the options and they are aligned with each other where people can bundle the different type of resources into one program, perhaps. Yeah. Very, very sensible, and that's, that's what, what you, you need to take advantage of mm -hmm. abundant energy when, it's, when it is abundant. You need to have the storage capacity, and obviously the utility you can't, you can't keep just a huge bank of batteries and cells, right? right? These batteries essentially have to be spread out right. among all the customers. That's so, exactly yeah. right. And then I think the next slide is just a simple uh, data point where we have all these resources available, but we cannot just rely just on the resources. We have to know what the resources are doing. So the technology you mentioned is already there. You're absolutely right. The advanced inverter systems, the inverter that are connected to the battery and the solar system, as well as the advanced metering, those are all available. So the question is, how do we accept all those data that is available and be able to design a program that we have to get to 3,000 megawatts type of situation? Right. You must, sitting in the center of this, you must have some basic uh, sort of machine learning algorithms that mm -hmm. are watching all the inputs, all the outflows, all the time, hooked up to weather forecasting models so that you're, you're, you're guessing an hour or two hours out what the solar input's going to be on a given area, what the yep. demand's going to be in another area, trying to yeah, keep everything. It is, it's, a, it's, it's like the guy you know, with all the plates spinning on all the poles, right? Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. And you're spinning a lot of plates on a lot of poles. Right. And, right. and I think you hit all the ones that we're looking at. And predicting any of those is actually quite difficult. No two customers are exactly the same and weather has been unpredictable as ever, so we have to be able to help with whatever we can at the distribution level, at the customer level, to help out with the total system of balancing that we're trying to do. Right, and the fact that we're entering an era of ever more frequent weather extremes mm -hmm. isn't, isn't making this any simpler, right? I mean, there, there are longer droughts, bigger storms, mm -hmm. longer, probably longer periods of very cloudy weather, you know, all, all kinds of different things that aren't happening today, again, you guys have to be thinking about what if or That's when right. this happens, That's what are right. we going to do, you know? Yeah. That's correct, yeah. Ethan. And then the culmination of that is on the next visual where we try to show that, you know, we have that, I think Lonnie mentioned earlier, each home is becoming a power plant, and, mm -hmm. but it's bi-directional. Not only is it generating, but it might, it's going to be smartly using energy the mm -hmm. way we would like to keep the area clean so we, we look forward to that opportunity and excited for that right and certainly uh, energy conservation is a big part of this you want you want people to mm -hmm. use energy in a smart way um, I have to go I, I was shocked when I moved here to Hawaii and mm -hmm. saw all the stores that run air conditioning with their doors wide open mm -hmm. and, uh, struck me as this, this is not high, high efficiency energy mm -hmm. use uh, I don't know what the, what the commercial how, how he was going to work with commercial folks to get past that or uh, what they're going to do. But. Well, as, as the mission that we together have, customer education is actually a big component of it. So we will continue to work on how to convey the message. Not everyone knows what demand response is. The first goal was to remove that name and be, talk about the customer energy resource to be the focal point of how we want to deliver. But to your point, education will be a key aspect. Of that. Yeah, uh, people are gradually uh, coming to appreciate the fact that, that it, and this water is a, is a limited finite mm -hmm. resource and you may have to pay more for water at different mm -hmm. times, different places, right. and, and people come to understand that now. And sort of the same thing with energy is you can get a better understanding. Energy isn't just something that comes magically out of some power plant somewhere, but something they're, they're personally involved with, right? Mm -hmm. you know, they're right. collecting it, they're generating it, they're using it. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, no, that's, that's wonderful. That, that kind of engagement really ought to, ought to uh, bring your customer base much more into the game. Mm -hmm. We look forward to that. I think we had one more slide. Yeah. And so we, we did, we initiated this uh, project footprint, and we, as a company as a whole, we're looking at customer as a focal point. We are doing everything for this for the customer, but we cannot do this without the customer's help. And so we're looking forward to that initiative where we will create new opportunities and be able to say, one electric needs your help to make this 100% true goal that we can achieve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, 
Now, you're going to involve a wide variety of different systems, doubtless. Uh, I suspect you folks are looking at wave energy and things like that. You know, that, that may be 20 years out still. Uh, people figure, figure out how to make that one practical. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's something we've, we've all got to face, particularly as we really do want to cut down on the amount of carbon we're dumping into the atmosphere. We have to be looking at this stuff, uh, as well as I'm sure you're looking at just how to burn stuff more efficiently in your existing power plants. So you of less carbon, how to scrub it better, take that carbon back out, back into the ground, or wh whatever, you use it in a more efficient way. Absolutely. I, I think, too, related to that project footprint initiative that we started, it's trying to incent our customers to take actions mm -hmm. to mitigate climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and because, like you said, it's really going to take everybody, and everybody can do something. And I know, like, um, right before this change happened with our organization, you and I talked, and we have very similar missions. Like, mm -hmm. why we come to work is to really help fight that, that good fight. Um, so it's, it's rewarding, I think, to see all of this happen. Yeah, no, this is actually, this is a beautiful example of the fact that climate change, while it is a big problem, it's not, it's not something that, that we can't take on. Each individual can really make real contributions mm -hmm. here. And you're, gonna, you're setting up a system where that, where individuals' efforts and individuals' contributions will, will become much clearer to them. You know, they'll, they'll be able to sort of see off of meters in their own home. Oh, oh look, you know, here we're using this much energy. Oh, what if we, you know, put our AC up a few a few degrees, let ourselves get a little warmer. Oops, hey, look, we save all this energy. Right. You know, and yeah. feed more back in the grid and bring everyone's costs down. You don't mm -hmm. have to do a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But if everyone begins to, to, to jump in. So I, I guess in, we got about a minute left here or so. What, do you have a, a, like a message for the consumers that you want to you uh, tell them? Mm. What would you say? Um, <laughs> uh, we, we look forward to working with the customers. Uh, we hope to simplify some of the messaging and be able to reach out to the hard to reach and make sure that everyone, that only not one is just benefiting, but everyone in the customer base is benefiting from this effort. Mm -hmm. I would say get engaged, yeah. learn about, look, look at your bill, right. learn about what you can do to make simple changes. Cool. No, this, is, this, is, this is absolutely exciting stuff, and it's wonderful to see you guys doing this. It's wonderful that HECO is uh, leading out in the nation to, to really show other people the path to, to energy self-sufficiency. Uh, Kailani, yo, I thank you both so much for being here. You've been, been vastly informative and actually inspiring, which is mm -hmm. great. So uh, I hope everyone will work with ECO to, to uh, uh, achieve these noble goals. And I hope you'll come back and see Code Green uh, next week when Howard will be back. Until then, I'm your host, Ethan Allen.